today's agenda i'm actually going to change out this bumper see i got this bolt here i got about four up under the bottom and then i've got this bolt on this side and so like i said that one's kind of rattling already but that just happened during my accident just got to get off my GMR's radio antenna. I'm going to take the tire off. I've got a new attachment that actually is going to carry this tire now, so I don't have to put the tire back on the door. So that's coming off too. But, yeah, it shouldn't take too long. But I got the air system is up under here. That's my air rod system right there. So I got to get my air rod system off and just kind of sit it somewhere while I do this install. But, yeah, it shouldn't take that long. I don't have Dev here to lift the bumper this time, so I'm going to take those. They sent me new D-rings. I'm going to take my D-rings off, just kind of sand them and repaint them a little bit. I don't want to put theirs on. I'm going to use mine, leave the new ones in the garage. First thing I'm going to do, like I already took the D-rings off real quick. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off my um, wheel, pop the wheel off, get this entire assembly off right there. I said it's For me, it's like a little carrier and stuff, so... All of that stuff's coming off, taking that door off. Then I'm going to get to the bumper after that. But I want to get that tire out of the way since I know I'm going to switch it. I'm getting all that stuff out of the way. So I took the tire off, opened the door. I took out these four bolts out of the back of the faceplate, pulled the little brake light off for the face, the faceplate for the brake light off. Got that off. Popped this side off. These are just, this right here, just two little inserts. It slides in this way. So make sure you pop it off from the left side and pull it out like this. You can't pop it out like this. You'll break those tabs right there. So that's how it connects. Pop off the left, slide it out. You'll see this wire, which is your brake wire. You'll see that hanging in there. So just pop the little rubber grommet off, pull the wire, unsnap the wire from this harness right here. There'll be a little harness inside of your door right there. Pop that harness. Pull it, slide it through the hole. Then you can just pull the whole wire out through this here. Throw it in the back. That part's done. Now I'm going to take these bolts off, and that should be uh, ready to put my faceplate on there. Once I get this little vent off inside of here, too, I'm going to take that vent off, put my faceplate on. All right, to get this little center piece off right there, which is this, there's little tabs at the top. Now if you try to pull forward, these tabs will raise up to make it even harder, and then you end up breaking them off. So get you a flathead, stick a flathead in there, and just press down. This is about as far as they are from the edge. You'll see that piece there just go over about, I don't know, half of an inch. Press down. The center one's next to that tab right there. And the last one's about a half inch from that tab. So you'll see those little pieces on there. Just move a half inch over to the left, press and pull. I mean, it's easy to pull straight out too. So make sure you don't just start yanking on it because it'll make those things snap. And then you pop these two little uh tire protectors pop those off and i should be ready to start my install of my actual door get your little rubber stops off that's how the back looks so you just do pull right out it should pop right past the lip of that little part right there and you're good to go these are out so this is my new um tailgate piece right there i already started the bolts by hand started threading them just to make sure they were threaded right because i'm gonna use my air wrench so you just put that on here and Lock it in. There we go. And I go in a cross bolt pattern like that just to make sure it's flush. It's just habit. I'm so used to threading things and crossing them. So you go left to right, left to right. You don't always do one spot. Let's go over here, do this one. That one. Come on. Down. There. Now I'll tighten them down by hand. I'm not going to tighten them with this thing because I don't want to strip nothing out. So when you're finished, that's what it'll look like. Now I'm about to start working on the bumper. Uh, air compressor down. That's my air compressor. And I'm going for this bolt right here. Now since the impact pushed the back of my Jeep in, I can't get anything around that bolt right there. Like, I mean, even this, this won't even slide. It barely like fits on there like that. And I can't even turn it because I gotta have something on the inside where this is pushed to to hold that nut on the back. But since this is all crunched in, like I said, that's all pushed in. I'm gonna have to angle grind a little square right here to release some of the pressure, knock it out, then take the bumper off, then get that bolt off after the bumper. So yeah, that's how my days go. 
So I think I angle grounded enough. I mean, there's like you can see holes through, so I see through it. So I'm gonna get my hammer. I'm gonna put like me a tap right here. See if I can't knock that little triangle out. If I can knock that triangle out, this bumper will pop off. All right, the bolt's pretty much free. I knocked that piece in, so it's not connected to anything. All I gotta do is loosen up all the other bolts. This will just snap right past that piece and I could get this off. So that's basically my mess right now. Got the rear bumper off, everything cleaned up. That's the old bumper right there. It's all mangled. So I mean, you can kind of tell where you get about over here, you can see all that nasty bends and everything. That right there should be straight down, like how that one is. See how that one's straight down? This one, it's not so straight. Yeah, so it took a good impact. I mean, it, it, and the fact that I didn't put the front bolts in kind of saved it a lot. So, I mean, it even bent that little piece right there. You know, it should be kind of straighter like that. It kind of bent it up a little bit, but. Just inspect for damage, inspected the Jeep a little bit for damage. I mean, pretty much that hole right there kind of looks a little like tweaked where the bolt was, the bolt kind of twisted down a little bit. So I can just probably tap that out, but it's pretty straight. I mean, even on the inside, that's where that bolt kind of hit right there. But I can tap that stuff out, no problem. Just kind of straighten the metal out, good to go. I was inspecting a little damage and you could see this long crease right here. That crease is actual, the back piece of this, this subframe is like a cross member. So this cross member has like a, where it, when it pushed, that whole hitch has a little lip on it and that hitch just kind of tweaked down a little bit and made a crease right here. So, I mean, if, if I had to, you know, get this thing fixed, what they probably do is, is either get me a new one because all you got to do is weld it around the edge here you can just weld a new cross member on here but you'd have to get it off or to just cut a small section out and re-weld the cross member right there i mean i'm trying to get it off there. you can see it better yeah there's that little crease right there they can re-weld that but i don't know if i'll let them tear my jeep up just for that i'll survive okay the new bumper is made by hook road so hook road makes this one Looks pretty much the same, except it's got the spindle at the top. But I'm going to put the um, actual tire carrier on. See how that's kind of thin right there? This is how theirs looks on Hook Road. Supports on the bottom and the top. So this thing shouldn't tweak. Might be a bad thing because, I mean, last time somebody hit this bumper, the fact that I didn't have the back bolts in allowed it to tweak down, which saved all of that from frame damage. That's pretty much straight. This will hook at the bottom and kind of pull it up over top. So maybe that's a bad thing. For all I know, I might just angle grind that piece off so it looks like that. I don't know, I'll decide. I don't mind the one on the top right there, but this, this is what's gonna end up hooking because it won't allow it to pendulum how I had it set up. But yeah, that's the piece up under there. That's their piece pretty much the same. I mean, it's a. it feels like a heavier bumper. I mean, that's pretty much larger than that that's you know could be like a eighth of an inch wider maybe quarter to the eighth of an inch wider but yeah i, I black those out because i don't use those i'm not blacking these out i'm not messing with that but pretty much that's what it is and i mean they're both sitting down so you know this one like i said the new one is a lot heavier just lifting it that one feels pretty you know it doesn't feel flimsy but it's not as heavy lifting this one up it's pretty heavy like i said that's hook road this thing's pretty solid that was super easy to slide on now i see why they got the hooks at the bottom the hooks at the bottom ensure that you can do it by yourself that i had to get dev to help me because there's no hooks to hold it in place you got to at least have one bolt in the side to hold the side on this because of those little pieces up because it actually slides in place and it wraps up under the bottom and wraps over the top this is holding itself in place right now with no bolts in the other one would just fall right off it, it had to have a bolt in there to keep it at least hanging up so this is perfect for a one person installation you can stand dead center lift it in slide it in place you're good to go that one you're gonna need two people to do that one okay so i got my guide bolt in the side right there I know I could put another one on this side, but I'm like, you know, I'm not even worried about that. You could actually do that from the back end, way back there, with a with a much longer one. 
but I'm not even worried about that. I mean, if it worked for a couple of years, you know, 130,000 miles of driving with one bolt in and it held up well to an accident, I'm not worried about that one. But later I got to do this here. But what I'm doing now is, like I said, I don't have it secured or tightened down right now because I want to start working on my actual tire carrier. But before I even do my tire carrier, I'm going to put my air compressor back on with those bolts on the bottom to secure it. Get all that locked in. Once I lock that in, then I worry about these bolts. These are the last bolts I'm going to actually worry about. Just got them in there so this thing don't drop right now. But, yep, it's going pretty smooth. Okay, so that's all secured on there. I got my single bolt in. It allows me to pivot. Then I've got all four of these bolts back here one two three four whoops here you go one two three four you got the four bolts best back there so i got four bolts plus two on the side six bolts basically holds this thing on you're good to go then i had to re-get my air compressor up under there and while i was up under there i uh tack welded a new bracket for this because i didn't like the old bracket so i just started welding a few things that's why it took me a little longer than i thought but that's the bumper now I gotta add the top piece on. This will be fun. Now I'm getting ready to set this piece up. This is the piece that actually is the tire carrier. And I got some instructions because they've got bearings. You gotta know, put the big on the bottom, the big race on the bottom with the bearings, the small race on the top with the bearings. Then you gotta do all your little setups for your tires. So I got instructions and I'm gonna see if I can do this. Should be, shouldn't be too hard because like I said, you just put the race in the actual um, tire carrier itself. You put the big race in the bottom, big race on top, grease it a little bit, lock that stuff in, should be good to go. Okay, so these are your bearings and when you take the bearings out like this, that's your race. That's your big race bearings and here's another set of bearings, small race right there. So the small race is actually going to go in the top grease the bearings here's all my bearing grease right here i'm gonna grease with this stuff and you grease it real good get them nice and lubricated then the big race is going to go on the bottom and then you just pack the bearings in there and i'm going to sit it all on top of that stud right there and it should work let's hope and so what i'm doing right now is i just put a little lubricant around the outside of the race because i'm just going to drop it right in here and it should just drop right in place see there it is so that's in place, it just slides in place. I'm gonna put a little more grease on it and I'm gonna grease these bearings right here and then just drop those right in the top. Then that part should be done. So there's my big race right there. It, it just slides up in there by hand. You don't have to tap it or anything. Just, just kind of work it back and forth a little bit like that by hand and you'll get it up in there. And there's the small one there. I had to take the bearings out so they wouldn't fall out on the ground while I had it like that. But so now my, bearing, my races are both in place. It's time to get the big set of bearings on here lock everything down now that everything's locked in and in place we got this huge castle nut goes right on top of here you'll tighten this down with a set of adjustable wrenches or whatever get it to where it, you know it's nice and snug because then eventually you'll put this cap on like this and once that cap's on it's a done deal you can start working on the rest of the door cap it off get your little small allen screw and make sure you line those holes up because like inside of there there's that hole you got to line that up with that drop that on there put this on done deal okay i got those set up now you want to make sure you know because you can see right here on this corner this nut has to be over far enough so you get clearance when you close it on both ends down here it'll probably hit this corner right here so make sure this nut is over far enough same with here make sure this nut is over far enough that way, when you swing it, look at that, it clears it. Now, I had a little bit too tight, so it was touching, and I was like, okay, it's kind of bumping something. And it was the same on the bottom. I mean, I had it a little too tight. So now, as I close it, it clears it. Look at that. It's a close clearance. I can afford to probably another couple of millimeters, but, I mean, that's good enough for me right there. So just make sure, you know, just these over far enough so they don't hit your corners. Cause and don't force, don't try to force shut it. Because if you try to force shut it, you're going to end up tearing some up. But just let it kind of bounce a little bit, and that's how you, I can tell that it was hitting some. I was kind of just letting it bounce, and I was like, okay, it's touching something. That's when I started inspecting everything and found out it was these two pieces. So luckily, I didn't force it because I would have probably end up bending it or breaking it. But never force something if it it should just swing open and close it real gently. If it's not closing and opening gently, you got to start inspecting stuff to make sure, but don't force it to close. But it's all good.
Here we go. Ready to mount my tire on there now. So now what I could do is I, you just unbolt the door like this and you can actually pull this piece. Check that out. So as I was going, I had to put this little bump stop back here. There's a bump stop that kind of inserts from the back. You put a nut and everything on it. You do the same to the front, tighten this down, but make sure you do it with your door closed because you want to make sure as soon as that door closes, these two touch perfectly like that. So it's resting right inside of there. But as you open the door, you'll see like it's kind of off centered. So make sure you do it with the door closed. Then you can just put on your back bracket here. Then you put on your little front bracket, slide it back, get that on. And I think I'm ready for the tire. I'll take a look at everything, but I think I'm I'm about ready. There we go. Got the tire back on. Everything. I had to cut these down a little bit because I wanted these back on there. So I cut these down to about what one and three quarters on this side and about one and a quarter. I should have did one and three quarters on that side because I see a little gap. But it's cool. It don't touch anything anyways. I just wanted it on there for looks. But yeah, I mean, it's like I had a couple of creaks at first, so I kind of lubricated that with some pb blaster a little bit lost the creaky sound and i said i had to adjust these i had these up here at first but i needed to move them down about five inches because the stud from this was touching the back of my actual wheel so i had to adjust it down now that stud kind of just hangs out there like in limbo where is it oh it's way back here you can't really see it but this stud here that stud right there that piece that's your adjustment right there and that adjustment if you got your tire up too high, it'll hit the back of your wheel. So I had to adjust mine down. So this right here got a little play. So I can go up maybe another two inches probably. So I can go up, each one of these holes is about an inch. So I could probably go up maybe about here, possibly here. No, cause that's where I was at first, here then. So these must be about two inches a piece. Cause I dropped down. So yeah, these holes are about two inches a piece. But anyways, I had to go down. Now I think everything's cool. It's locked in there. You know, you lock your two bolts in there. To, you can slide that back and forth. If you want your tire all the way back, slide it all the way back. You want it forward some more because you got 37s. Slide it forward a little bit so that 37 meat can kind of fit or whatever. But for the most part, there it is. Tire's on there. No more weight on that door. Not that it was really bugging me anyways, because these ain't 37s, but once you go up to 37s, yeah, you're not you're not hanging that tire on the back door. 35s is cool, but 37s, nah. But that's it. Looks pretty nice. I gotta paint those, but there you go. Hook road. That looks pretty cool. And I got my little antenna tucked right back there, so my GMRS antenna still fits pretty well. But that's it. It's a done deal.